Hi, you're watching Strangeware and this is another round of Cheap Stuff. For today's build, I've been given the same budget as with my last build and that's $200. And for this money, I'm supposed to build a PC aimed mainly for productivity. This time, however, I won't have an SSD to work with. I won't have a PC case and I won't have a power supply. So to get those things, everything for under $200 is actually quite a challenge. So let's take a look at what we found. First off, there's the motherboard and this is the Gigabyte GA780T-D3L. It's an AM3 socket motherboard and uh, it does have both PCI Express and PCI and I know the client might actually be using uh, this with a PCI sound card so that's uh, quite an important piece of hardware there. There are IDE slots, there are SATA slots so any drive I can think about can be plugged into this and turning the motherboard around we can actually see uh, there's been some tinkering done with it and that's replaced capacitors because the ones uh, that used to be there were uh, already worn out a bit so the previous owner had it replaced for well actually better ones so this should last quite some time then of course there's the CPU we'll be pairing this with and uh, the original intention here was to get an FX6300 but FX6300 was a little bit out of our budget by about, let's say, 20 or 30 bucks. And uh, I did not actually manage to win any eBay auctions to uh, get it on some, for some uh, good price. So in the end, we went with a quad-core Phenom X4. This is a 955 Black Edition. This is a quad-core clocked at 3.2 gigahertz. So that should take care of anything we can throw at it and it's very easily overclockable. And with the CPU also came this nice cooler. This is the Alpenfern uh, Grossglockner. And uh, well, this has a 120 millimeter fan on the front and it should take care of any heat this CPU will produce. Also, we get 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM by Crucial and uh, well this is thrown in with the motherboard for a really nice price so that's cool there is however one small downfall for this CPU and uh, well actually for the whole platform it does not offer iGPU so we had to get some sort of a display adapter card and for this we chose GeForce GT610 uh, I was able to get this for about $12, I believe. So, well, just a really cheap display adapter card, uh, capable of uh, DirectX 11 and outputting full HD resolution to the display. It comes with one gigabyte of memory. It's a DDR3 memory, but uh, well, who cares? This is a display adapter card, it's not a gaming card. And uh, all that's left now is, uh, well, actually two things. First, the power supply. And, uh, well, this is a quite power hungry CPU and uh, we may be even overclocking it, so it will require quite some power. And this shiny gold thing is a thrust 570 watt power supply with dual fan. It actually has two fans. It's a reasonably quiet considering it has two fans and uh, well quite powerful for what we need. The color should not be a problem. And yeah then there's the storage. I was able to get a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Green Drive for I believe this was seven bucks. The drive works just fine. I've um, put it through some testing and it's just a healthy and happy drive. 
but for an SSD we actually went for um, well only slightly used one so it was almost for the full price with warranty this is the Corsair uh, Force LS 120 GB SSD and this actually set us this is I believe the uh, most expensive piece of uh, all the hardware in the PC well maybe on par with uh, the CPU but uh, I, I guess everyone knows today that uh, the SSD actually makes quite a lot of difference while using your PC the SSD is the thing that uh, gives you a really good boost so yeah enough talking Oh no, I've nearly forgotten. The thing here in the back. This is another thing we bought new because buying a cheap PC case used is just just doesn't make sense because when you're when you're searching for cheap used PC case, you usually end up with uh, one of the things I was working on previously. So we went for a new one. And uh, well, considering again, this is a PC for like I don't know five years maybe, then it will really be lagging behind. So, in five years' time, uh, the owner will probably be upgrading. But why not keep uh, the PC case? So, we went for Silentium PC, it's made in Poland, I believe, and not really widely available. So, this is a Silentium PC Brutus M10 Pure Black. And well, this case actually offers everything you might want from a PC like this. Even if you were to replace the display adapter card with uh, some GTX gaming card, it will actually perform quite well in this case because uh, as you will see in a moment when I unbox it, uh, there's this huge front uh, mesh with filter and that should give you quite a lot of airflow you will need. Uh, it has a one a five and a quarter inch slot for uh, your DVD drive or uh, what have you. It has a USB 3 on the front panel, uh, audio and SD card reader. So that's I think a very nice extra. And considering the owner would like this uh, to be uh, like more multimedia, multimedia PC, um, I guess he will be like downloading uh, photographs from uh, his, uh, his camera or videos so yeah SD card reader comes handy in this case all right well only one small hiccup I've come across right now and yeah that's that this motherboard actually does not does not have USB 3 I did not, did not realize it earlier. Yeah, whatever. I may actually be able to get a PCI Express card with USB 3 capability for, I don't know, these go, things go for like five bucks. So yeah, that should be, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Oh yeah. So without further ado, let's get building it. But first, uh, yeah, first we will test the CPU, motherboard, memories, the hard drive, then we'll do the unboxing of uh, Brutus M10 and finally put together the, this whole machine. Let's get to it.
All right, so now let's take out the PC case. Static electricity, always present. Uh, wow, this thing is actually very light. I can just hold it up with one hand. That's cool. Okay, so let's see. What can we get for, I believe this was about $30. On the bottom there are actually foam or rubber feet. So that holds pretty well. Looking at the case, it's actually not bad. Let's check out the case. Okay, so there's should have rotated this a bit so we get some daylight coming on it. There's the front panel. As I said, the USB 3 ports, audio, card reader for SD and micro SD cards, and the power button. So, yeah, good. On the back of the case, there's your 92 i believe this is millimeter fan just for some basic cooling and it should be seven um, extension slots great and now let's take a look inside again as i said this case is very light i can just lift it up with my hand Of course, there's usually the trade-off of weight and rigidity of the case. So in this, in case of this case, I believe the rigidity won't be that good. The panels are actually pretty thin, but they don't flex that much as I would expect. So yeah, cool. Man, I would really like to put this camera on a tripod but yeah let's just keep rolling inside the case there is a paper with instructions we don't need that and the cables here yeah it's actually tied to the case do this a bunch of screws cool cable tie taking the cables out this is let me just focus this, this is the USB card reader cable HD audio cable and USB 3 cable with built-in USB 2 reduction so yeah that's actually cool I won't have to get an adapter yeah what more could I wish for In the bottom there there's a tray for your hard drive and an SSD on top so again all we need and you can see the interior is actually all black so it doesn't look cheesy yeah I actually like this case I believe if I were to replace my fractal design core 1500 this might be a suitable candidate you can see there's maybe you can see that in the video 
There's space for 220 mm fans in the front. So you get a lot of airflow. Yeah, I actually like this case. For this money, I don't think I could have gotten anything better. Okay, so let's try to build a PC in the case. Well, the build is completed, so let's review the pricing. The total sum paid for this PC came to 222 euros, or about 230 dollars, I'd say. And uh, well, yes, we have a bit deviated from the original budget of 200 dollars, or well, it doesn't really matter if they're dollars or euros. The, prices are pretty much the same but that's mainly thanks to buying a new SSD as opposed to a used one because you know the SSD should actually be the reliable part of your system you will have uh, all your programs running on it and it just makes sense to actually buy a new one or just slightly used one with a warranty all right, so the 222 euros, that's 44 euros for a CPU with this massive cooler with a 120 millimeter fan on it. So that's actually pretty effective. And then there's 30, 30 euros for motherboard in the back. Uh, about 10 euros in total with shipping for the power supply 570 watt power supply for uh, 10 euro. That's that's cool. Uh, then about 35 or something like that for uh, DDR memory, DDR3 memory, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. Then there's the GPU, the GT610, which came to around 16 euros. So again, that's including the shipping. That's actually a very nice price for, for, for this graphics card. Uh, then there's the case that's also new at this one came to about 27 euros. Uh, and there are the hard drive and SSD hard drive. This was an auction and again with shipping $14 half a terabyte drive. And the SSD Corsair Force that's almost 50 euros so yeah that's the most expensive part of the setup but also one of the best performing in there now uh, there's actually slight quite easy upgrade path here if the owner was to i don't know dump productivity and uh, move on to gaming he could actually put in a quite powerful gaming card and uh, well, I don't have one lying around uh, right now, but if I was to put in, let's say, 
this GTX 285 from Asus. Uh, this card gets uh, decent frame rates even in newer titles, but it does not support DirectX 11. So, <clears throat> well, you can't actually look forward to the most recent titles, but let's say Battlefield 3. Battlefield, Battlefield 3 actually runs on ultra settings, full HD, 60 FPS and more with this uh, grandfather of a card. But of course that would require uh, you to have some additional power for the card and I believe some additional airflow. Now, when, when I installed Windows 7 on the PC, uh, there was a little bit of a problem with uh, the Ethernet, Ethernet adapter and that was it wasn't recognized. Not even in uh, the device manager, not anywhere. So it was not just a matter of installing the drivers. drivers. This might have had something to do with uh, the board being repaired. Luckily, from the last build we did, we actually salvaged a PCI card. It's an Ethernet card, you can see it right here in the bottom. And well, that works just fine. And uh, considering how little money the owner spent on uh, this whole PC, I don't think he would uh, actually mind having just the 100 megabit card in there. I really don't think his internet would be any faster than that. But yeah, with that done, I think this PC is ready to be shipped out. And also you might have noticed this rather large clump of cables. Those are mostly Mobilex cables and sort of that. Uh, there is a space behind the motherboard tray for routing the cables, but it is really not designed for uh, thick cables like these. If, I, if, the, if this power supply had flat uh, cables, that would be okay, but the space back there is, even with the bulge on the side of, uh, of the case, you know what I'm talking about, this one, uh, that's like a centimeter of space, so not really much maneuvering space. And uh, I'm actually very glad for this bulge on, on the side of the, of the case, because if it wasn't for that, we would not have fit in this massive cooler. But yeah, with that said and done, let's just close up the case and call it a day. So that's all for today's video. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave me a comment and I'll be looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.